Okay, so now I've got my snowman done, and I've got it in a few different pieces so I can actually animate the snowman around. So um, then when you're animating these guys, you want to put your pivot points where, the, where it belongs on that layer. So I'll put the pivot points here. Here. And up there. Middle. It's fine there. And then base should go down there. And then to finish creating my little cutout character here, um, you know, you could do this using pegs if you want to, but I'm just going to do a really simple structure here since it's not a very complex animation that I have in mind. So the, the middle is a child of the base, the top is a child of the middle, and then the arms are both a child of the middle since they're coming out of the middle there. And the hat is a child of the top. And after you rearrange those guys there, in your, uh, for your hierarchy, you also need to rearrange them in space. So I can select my, um, let's select the whole middle there, and then I'll turn off the animate button so that I'm not creating a keyframe. And then I'm going to use the, um, the shortcut for up and down arrow, sorry, alt and down arrow to move it forward. And then I'll do the same thing here, alt and down to move forward. And here, alt and down to move forward. And then I also like seeing the front of the branches, so I'll move those forward too. There we go. So now I've got my snowman all ready to do a little animation on. So in order to actually do my animation, I'll just extend the exposure of my snowman throughout my frame. And then I can do some fun stuff. So I could take the entire thing. And remember, as soon as you do want to animate, you turn on your transform tool with your animate button. So Let's, uh, let's just scale down the whole thing um, there. So I'll select my base there, and then I can uh, hold down Shift and then um, scale down from the side. And now let's have this guy doing a little bit of bouncing. So I can put my first keyframe to be like a little squash there. And then I'll go a few frames later, and I'll stretch him back out. And maybe I'll also, like, I could skew him over or I could rotate him over. So he's doing a little bit of a of a dance here. And then I can move him back over to the center again. And then I can squash it down. Do to do. And I'll just add a few more keys. And I can even make a cycle out of these keyframes if I'd like. And if it's going a little bit too fast, then of course you're just going to drag the keyframes apart. So then maybe I'll just hit F7 to remove some keyframes. And I'll move this guy over there. Move it like that. And then I can put a little bit, once I got the main motion working here, I can put a little bit of secondary motion. So 
Let's um, put a keyframe on everything with F6. And then here I'm going to put a little bit of uh, motion on the arms here. There we go. So now I've got my bouncing snowman. I can add in some other elements that I have drawn already into my scene. Okay, so I brought in some more artwork for my holiday card here. I have um, a couple of trees. I put some snow around the base of the tree because I think that just makes it sort of blend more um, well with the environment there. So I have a couple of trees on their own layer and then um, I made just a, a snowy background layer and then there is a layer here called Falling Snow. And this layer called Falling Snow just has a bunch of little dots in it. So when you're not, when you don't have the particle engine of harmony, you can still get a cool looking falling snow by just, um, you know, taking your brush tool and making some dots, first of all. And then um, to finish off our falling snow, what I'll do is I'll take this falling snow layer and I'll duplicate the layer. Um, not a clone, but a duplicate so that it's totally separate. And you can change some stuff up. You can have two completely different ones, but it's just a little bit easier to do it this way. And then I'm going to take my advanced animation toolbar. I have the translate tool from the advanced animation toolbar. And then I have my top view open here. So what I can do is I can just move this layer back in space. So moving this layer back in space is going to give the illusion of perspective when we animate these. When they're, when they're both still, you don't really see anything. But if we want to animate them, and if we want to animate them together, then we should add a peg. So I selected the falling snow and I added a peg layer. And then I'll take the other copy of the falling snow as well and put it in there. And now I can just put some keyframes on this. So I'll take my translate tool and I'll just create a keyframe on the first frame and then go a few frames later and I'll move it down. And you see a little bit of that perspective when you have the two, two layers that are laid out in space uh, when you animate it. So just, you know, pay attention to that a little bit. And then for fun, we're going to whip this guy up a little bit so those keyframes are closer together and then farther apart and go down. And now if I play through this, I can check the speed of it. And you see that bit of a 3D effect on it. It looks pretty cool for, uh, for just having one drawing layer. It looks pretty cool. And this is what that 3D space can give you even in Animate. It gives you some, some advantages over not having the 3D space. So now I can turn my snowman back on again and I'll just uh, reposition my trees so that they are a little bit um, smaller and where they're in the background so they belong better with this one, with this scene. Whoops, and I didn't mean to put keyframes on those so I'll just go to my tree layers here and I will remove the first keyframe by hitting F7 on those keyframes there. So that just leaves the last keyframe that I had there. And so now I see my bouncing, um, I've got my bouncing snowman in there and I've got the snow happening. And then I might just want to add in now a little bit of text on top of it. So I'll take this entire scene and uh, right now it's 60 frames so I'm going to make it um, three times that much. So Let's, whoops, that's not instead of scene settings, but I'd like to do a scene length. You can also do it by dragging on that down there, but um, it's a little bit easier to do it from here. So 60 by 3 is 180. And then I will just um, clear out those that I did before. And then I'm going to go to my last frame there and going to extend the exposure all the way until the last frame. And uh, for the snowman, I'm just going to select... Um, the keyframes that I have already there, copy, and then I'm going to do a paste cycle. And uh, let's just paste a few cycles in there. So, so now I've got this guy animating throughout the entire thing. And the snow isn't uh, animating throughout the entire thing. And I don't quite have enough snow for it to animate all the way as well. So um, I can select the keyframes here and copy and paste them, but then they won't continue to move downwards. So what I'll do is I'll just go inside my falling snow layer and I can do this um, you know, directly in my camera view just to make it easier. 
but when I have that select tool works in a single drawing then it works better here so I can copy this one and then I can paste those uh, the snow in there and then I'll just drag it I'll drag it up so that um, so that I have a copy so I can select the entire thing and you do have to kind of mouse over one of these uh, so that you get that um, translate icon there and then you can drag it up a little bit too far like so oops it looks like I moved both copies up let's undo hold on okay so redo that part now I'm going to take my falling snow and I will copy and paste it and I'm just going to move the copy up instead of moving the copy and the original and then I can copy and paste it one last time if I want to have even more snow it's a little tricky to grab onto those things when they are when they're uh, you know like when it's not filled when there's no background on it so one thing that you can do that's kind of a trick is if you do have something like this you can take um, a new color I'm just gonna make it absurdly green or pink so that we realize where it is and then I'll draw an outline around my snow here and I'll fill it in with a color so now it's totally filled in everywhere and but then I can change this color to have like alpha of zero I'll make it just a, a semi-transparent alpha for now to show you what that means and then I can select, now I can select my snow here and I can copy and paste it and then when I try to move it, it just makes it a lot easier to move that that copy up there. So now I've got, I've got lots of snow and then I can make that all the way transparent so that I have the entire snow there. That's what some studios do when they have very small drawings and they want to grab onto them is they make a semi-transparent version of that drawing. So I'll select all my snow here and I'll copy it into my other snow layer So that way I have the two that are kind of similar to each other. And then we'll see them animating, but slightly different. Okay, so now if I go back to my greeting card, I've got um, everything done that I want to do apart from I need a background and then I want to add some text on top of it. And then I would like to also do a little bit more animation on this snow. So let's just keep animating the snow down here.